So hello, I'm having a chat with Luca today. Luca, do you want to introduce yourself to everybody and tell people your age and what you're up to? So hi, my name is Luca and I am 17 and I am doing lockdown in a normalish way. So I'm doing stuff that I would normally do at home, like working and sorting out work and also getting some downtime for myself, even binge watching on some new series that I found on Channel 4. Are you still at school, Luca? Do you want to explain how that's going? So technically I am still at school, but we're doing it remotely. And how are you so finding every- that? It's all right. The first week was absolutely horrendous, got bombarded with work because the teachers didn't actually know how long they needed to have us working for. And it turned out the first week was nine hours per week for each subject when it should actually be five hours for each subject. So that's nearly half. Very Um, hard. So do you want to tell people about your diagnosis and your I'm going to say your journey with autism so far, which sounds a little bit weird, but how, how, how's the lived experience of being autistic been for you thus far? At first, it wasn't the best at all. I didn't like it. I didn't understand what it meant at first. And then obviously I went through and then I found this wonderful group of people who were all the same as me. And we've now recorded two films and I'm absolutely happy with myself because when we did the first film, I could have never thought of myself as being in a film. And these are the films that are on on our website, aren't they? The things that we've got involved with and we've got you guys involved with, which has been amazing, Amazing. hasn't it? Yeah, I'm glad they had such a positive effect. So what was it about meeting those people and making the films that have such a difference for you? They had similar experiences to me because it actually felt better for me to be connected with other people who were on the autistic spectrum. No matter how different it was, it gave me a bit of closure to actually think that there are other people out there like myself and there actually are people who go through the same things every day as I do and that have similar sensory issues and stuff like that and similar social issues as well. And if connecting with other people is important to you, how are you finding that now in isolation? I'm finding it okay. I talk to most of my friends via WhatsApp and Instagram message and stuff like that. But I'm also keeping in contact with our drama group outside of our Zoom sessions on a Tuesday evening. Like the other day, I spoke to Penilla and we had a a long conversation about different things. We even spoke about the coat thing we did the other night, which was quite funny. You talked about what? (laughs) We talked about the quiz we did the other night. Oh, good. (laughs) Yeah. So what are some of the things that are useful that are supporting you now? I have to actually say that there's one thing that's really supporting me at the moment, and that is actually my Amazon Echo Dot. (laughs) because I'm using that when I'm working to create lists, to create timers to the times that the teachers have said it should take to work. So for example, I could just say, set a timer for an hour and a half, and I would get that work done strategically in that hour and a half. So I put lists for each subject, so I can put this, this, and this for German, and this, this, and this for science. And then as I go through, I just say, tick it off, tick it off, So you like the order and the routine? Yeah, the order is really good. The only thing I haven't mastered yet is getting up before nine like school say you should. Because like this morning I got up at nine o'clock, but hey, I've been working all day, so. (laughs) I think you're allowed a little allowance, aren't you? Yeah, I am. What's the hardest thing thing for you about this isolation period? Not knowing what will happen next. And the thing is what school is saying and what I'm saying is that I'm not watching the news constantly every day because it's really daunting and they don't actually see much of the positives. They see more of the negatives with the COVID-19 outbreak. And the thing is, they should see more of the positives. Like, look at that Tom Moore who raised 30 million pounds for the NHS. 
and that's a positive but they just say oh yeah 30,000 people have died and it's very doom and gloom so do you think you it's not leader, nice if you be leading the news Luca do you think <laughs> maybe I could be like yeah really positive this person's done this and that's good and if I run the news I would definitely talk about it <laughs> uh, and what's um what's something that you look forward to doing when this is finished actually being able to meet up with friends I'm like talking to friends saying oh can we meet up after lockdown because it'd be lovely to see you all and I was saying to Penilla, oh god I can't wait to see you after the lockdown I've yeah. been missing you a lot and stuff like and that. What do you think about social media how do you find does that is that useful when you're you know if you're posting things or relating to people how do you find because we were talking about that in two previous conversations the whole using social media as a platform to connect but also it can be quite toxic because there's so many things on there and often people yeah. comment that might be quite hurtful as well yeah because sometimes i post things and mum actually is very quite supportive with that she actually follows me so she can see exactly what i'm putting up and if she said oh no that will make you get bullied or something like that because of what happened before she'll actually say look take that down so that nobody actually sees that so then you actually don't get the anger get the rudeness and stuff like that yeah. and for example it was my prom a year ago yesterday and I put loads of things on my Instagram story up and she was like maybe not post pictures with other people because you don't know because you haven't seen them in a while how they'll react to it and then oh you might get angry comments on on it and if so I see having, having a, almost like having a mentor or somebody who mm. screens for you is a good idea yeah your, it's your really mom's good. very lucky that you let her do that a lot of people don't let their mums do that yeah at first I was a bit apprehensive but I was like no because obviously you remember what happened before with all those people that kind of ambushed me in one place and mum wasn't actually there to help and it was horrible but when I actually let her into my followers and stuff like that. She's seen exactly what was going up and she could actually see the comments. And what I do is if I see a rude comment, Instagram actually lets the person who posted that post delete the comments off of it so that other people don't see the rudeness. Good. But you can also report the comments. Good. That makes and you they feel get safe reviewed. It, yeah, it does. And also the school have emailed out about saying how you should be safe online which is really really helpful because and I bet lots of us would forget how to stay safe and it's wrong and think of this isolation what do you think the experience like is different for somebody who's autistic or not autistic this isolation well one of my friends he's neurotypical but his cousin his 10 year old cousin is autistic and he, at the very start, he had meltdowns and stuff like that. But now he's got himself into a proper routine. And yes, it did take time. But still, Cameron did get a routine, which is really good to see. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, with autism, you know how some autistic people are picky eaters? Mm -hmm. Cameron is a very picky eater and he'll like decide what he wants to eat when he wants to eat it. So it was very hard for Jack to help Cameron find his routine right, but in the end Jack did it and I'm really proud of him because he actually battled with his aunt and stuff like that to get Cameron into a nice routine and get him nice and calm which is really good to see. What's been the hardest thing for you not seeing people yeah? Yeah not seeing people at all. Because what about your anxiety this, how's that been? It's been all right like if I'm the only thing I don't like is when somebody like I'm busy working and then somebody just rings me out of the blue and then they're like, oh, I want to talk. I want to talk now. But I'm like, I really have to do this. So can I talk to you later? And then people have been like, oh, well, no, I won't talk to you. But I think then everybody everybody's free to talk now, don't they? Yeah, they do. And what's and some people do, think it's holiday. If we're going to talk about wider issues, you know, some of the things that we've talked about in our films, what are some of the key messages that you think people should understand about autism and your autism? It doesn't stop. 
it's like not something that comes on and goes off it stays with you so like there will be points when I don't want to do things and I don't want to be in a group with people I just want to talk to one person because like the thing is with people is sometimes they're like oh yeah I'll put you in a group and then sometimes you think do I really know these people because it's like loads of other people's friends in the one group and you're on a group chat with them and then you get tons of messages come through like saying hi who is this how are you and all of that and I'm thinking I just wanted to talk to one person why did all of these people come and just decide to talk so I suppose the social rules that are new on the Zoom platform are as confusing as the social rules as to when you walk into a room. Why are the social rules so confusing for you, for you and for other people that we work with? Do you know that, Luca? Do you have any sense of that? In a way, I think it's slightly different with the Zoom because remember when we're doing our drama groups and stuff, the time delay as well, because somebody will speak and then say, for example, if Jacob spoke and then I spoke, then it would come through to you at the same time. And then you don't know who's actually spoken first because of the internet connection on one person's end. Is it like that in like, real life sometimes too for you as well? Yeah, it is. Because remember when we were doing that one, two, three, four thing the other week, and we were trying to say who was going to say two, three, four, five. When I was doing it, Penilla's voice and Jacob's voice came through at the same time. So I didn't know who had actually said that at the time. But in the chat, it's easier because you can actually communicate a message out if you don't want to sort of speak, really. It gives you options, doesn't it? Which I suppose yeah, it gives. when you're it in does. a live situation, you can't just text somebody, can you? Because they're not no, you can't. to get a text. So maybe having those dual platforms is quite interesting. Mm. You can talk. You can watch, you can chat, you've got time to respond. So there's something good yeah. about Zoom. Why is it so difficult in the real life, do you think, to make those social connections? Because some people, so if I'm in school, for example, let's just use school as the example. There might be people in my class that understand some stuff about it, but not all the stuff about it. So they may, when, like, say, for example, I said to somebody I was autistic, they may think, oh yeah, this, this and this, like the stereotypes we covered in film two. Like they may think, oh yeah, he's not good at this. He might not be able to do that. And then sometimes people take it the wrong way and then it goes wrong and people say nasty things yeah. and then it gets all out of hand, which is very, very sad to think that on it's actually online that autism is actually so slagged off in a way so you know flogged about which is wrong if you could change one thing about your autism though what would it be it would be to make me more happier and actually enjoy the things that happen as they come because sometimes i think oh no i'm not really going to enjoy that but actually i do and there's things that i really enjoy but there's, there's a fear then if you don't know it's coming or you don't know what it's going to yeah. be like. And that fear is, what's the voice in your head saying when you're scared then? Don't do that. Just be your normal you and just, you know, don't do what other people are doing. Be you. But then if other people are doing it and then they have fun, then I think, yeah, actually, I can do that. And then we can do that and then we can all have fun and we can all have a laugh after. It takes quite a bit of processing. to Yes, get it does. Days. Yeah, it does. You don't automatically think that's going to be fun. You have to have a little chat with yourself. Mm. I suppose maybe some days that's harder to access, isn't it? Yeah, it is actually. Yeah. Because I'm like, yeah, do I really want to do this today or not really? But the good thing is my teachers have been really good with the fact that they've actually communicated between me and them. So that it's like it's not it's like the school closed, but they've they still they still care about us, which is really good. And actually I've seen 
that most of my friends who I obviously had before the lockdown, some of them have like said, nah, I'll be me. But other people have actually stuck with me during the lockdown to make sure that I'm okay. That feels good, doesn't it? It does actually. That's what you want in life, really, don't you find? It is. You've got your back. Yeah. Yeah. Because you need that. Because if, like, you're the outsider and then somebody, like, bullied you or something like that, then that would just be wrong. And then you're left alone and then it causes anxiety, depression. And sometimes, inevitably, it can actually cause suicide in people. And do you feel like the outsider because of the autism? Yes, in some places, yeah. But ever since we had that presentation at school last year, it had ever so slightly improved, actually, in the fact that I'm more inside the group, I'm more wanted as a person. And you should have actually seen, I actually got an award at the prom that took place a year ago yesterday. And every single person in that room applauded me. Not one person didn't. And if I thought about it before we made them, probably 20 or 30 would have done that. If you think but about it. What's the difference? Just being braver, talking about it, feeling connected. Mm. These are all things that we should be encouraging everyone to do because not everyone's yeah. got a drama group or a film project. So no, if not someone everyone hasn't has. got a film project or a drama group to go to, how can they get this feeling that you've got of belonging and acceptance? What, what advice would you give somebody? I would say look at groups and stuff, obviously, because not everybody will have a drama group or a film project. But there are also other projects out there that obviously do the not-for-profit stuff for autism. Because before I met you and we obviously got to know each other i did an equine therapy project place that's down it's near me it's in rugby and they've got like an equine therapy place for all sorts of disabilities and it did feel belonging and they did have like a youth group and stuff like that that i used to attend every week and it was it kind of felt like there are people who have disabilities but not all of them are autistic but there are some groups that are, are, are autism specific and people should look around to actually see if there's yeah. groups that are autism specific. And what if they can't access those groups because of isolation? How does that work? I think they should talk to their friends, like if they have friends, because some people don't, which is the horrible thing to think about. Mm. But people should reach out to their friends and say, look, I'm feeling this way. Can you help me in any way? So people are then, honest about your feelings. Yes, it is. But the thing is, some people are rather selfish and think, oh yeah, I'm feeling this way. It's all about me. It's not about anybody else. And then they'll take, you know, take the mickey out of people and then make other people feel like they initially felt in the first place. Yeah, so you've got to make sure And then it starts a chain right reaction. People. You've got to reach yeah. out to the right people. And you only need one friend, one or two friends. No, yeah, you do. Back, this idea that you've got to have lots of friends. Well, that's not safe for anybody now online. No, it's we not. Because... We know that, don't we? Yeah, we, we do. It's not safe to have many friends. Because what if you built a relationship with somebody that before the lockdown you wouldn't have known well, and then you meet up with them, and then you think, oh no, they're getting me to do this and they're getting me to get into trouble and then... You yeah, don't really know somebody, do you? But no. we are in an isolation period, which means it's going to be difficult. So what advice could you give to parents who might be listening to this on how to help their children generally? Talk to them. Definitely talk to them and spend, I don't know, an hour a day, no TV, no technology, no nothing, and just sit with them and just say, what was positive about the day? And what can actually, we can change to make positive, so the negatives to make positive in the next day. And do that every day to make the child feel secure. That sounds like those lovely connected moments that we always talk about. Mm. And I think that everyone's having a different experience at the moment, as is. Yeah, everyone is. Normal. 
but what I'm hearing is that after the initial chaos and the stress, yeah. some people it's becoming a lot calmer, especially if you're not in the workplace at the moment or if you're at home and safe. Definitely. <laughs> Can you imagine if you had a job or you lived on your own? It might be quite yeah. difficult um, to know how to kind of what I call anchor yourself, which is what you're doing mm. in your work and your family unit. Yeah. But, you know, what advice? Because would you I take my hat life? off to Teddy because Teddy was in uni and he was in London all on his own when it all started off. Yeah. And then he managed to eventually get home and get sorted out and he's doing really well now so yeah, i think everyone's going to find their way and then we've got to yeah. think about going back into normal life how does that feel when it all opens up again it feels weird because obviously i've listened to the news today there's somebody who thinks you know how you go to the shops and you have to stay two meters apart from one person to the next there's a professor on the on itv news today that actually said one meter is better than two because you're closer and lots of people need to work together. But I was actually thinking this afternoon, I have a year eight German class, it's about 30 of them. <laughs> and I'm not sure how, when I go back, how I'm gonna be able to keep two meters apart from each person. You can't physically do it in a classroom, you can't. I think the school will have to sort it out. I don't know. Yeah, how I think the school will. Well, they're working on it very hard right now, wouldn't you think? Yeah, I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are. They're a really good school, so. And is there anything else you'd work. like to say in this conversation that could help either young people who are listening or parents just to give them some more insight into autism? I think that when people obviously think about autism, obviously there's stereotypes but there's also good things about it and lots of sort of children and other autistic people think that they define what it is stereotypes do not define anything because every single person is unique and every single person is different so oh, really they right. so the person who's worried about the stereotypes should know that they're unique and they don't have the same issues as every single other person and that they actually suffer differently but they can suffer in a happy way knowing that they're who they are and that's what I actually did when we were on the film I actually went home one day the first film and I said I'm actually unique I don't have lots of issues but I do have some kind of issues and they fall under autism but our, my autism isn't like Penilla's autism or Teddy's autism or Morgan's autism so yeah just remember you're unique and being unique is good isn't it it is it most I would, definitely I would is say, would you rather be a daffodil or an orchid and I think an orchid is a much nicer yeah. flower Lord, anybody is. can be a daffodil can't they yeah anybody can always unique and often quite temperamental orchid. they are they are definitely, Jesse, <laughs> I'm yeah. not saying that anybody I know is temperamental, but what I mean is you never quite know what you're going to get. No, you don't. You and don't. That's the beauty of it. You've been amazing, Luca. Thank you. It's been lovely having a conversation with you. I feel really connected. It's brightened up my day. Thank so, you. Would you like to say goodbye to everybody? Thank you, everyone, for listening. Goodbye. <laughs>